Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hussein, and I am back today talking to you about your cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is a favorite topic of cardiologists, and for decades we have told patients that it is the root of all of their cardiovascular problems, specifically atherosclerosis and heart attacks. That is not the case, and today I'm going to go over some of the misconceptions that have existed over the years. Let's start with the first one. All cholesterol is bad. Definitely not true. Cholesterol is vital for life. All of the subfractions are vital and have a purpose. Cholesterol is used for hormone production, membrane health, to regulate our immune system, to communicate between other parts of our body, to maintain resilience and overall health and reparative function. So when we reduce that cholesterol too much, it can impair those life-saving and life-preserving functions. Now, there are instances where we will suppress cholesterol excessively, and that can be if somebody has excessive inflammation and it's in a situation of severe atherosclerosis. Ideally, it wouldn't be done for an extended period of time, and it would be done to take that patient out of a high-risk period of their life. Otherwise, we want to maintain healthy cholesterol levels and we want to maintain the right amounts of different cholesterol subfractions. So that takes us to the second misconception. LDLs are bad and HDLs are good. Well, not all LDLs are bad because LDLs come in different shapes and sizes. And there are a multitude of patients that have high LDLs, but they're not of the type that are small and dense and cause plaque. The large fluffy LDLs, they're like beach balls, will bounce around on the inside of our arteries and will not cause plaque. Not all LDLs are bad and not all HDLs are good. HDLs historically have been considered the good cholesterol. What we know is that when HDLs are excessively high, that can actually cause a reverse effect and not be as protective. That can be a sign of misfolded or dysfunctional HDLs. So those HDLs won't work properly and that person can actually be at a higher risk for atherosclerosis or heart disease. That comes to point number three, triglycerides. Triglycerides have been traditionally thought of as not as important as LDLs in the process of atherosclerosis. Well, that's not true. Triglycerides do contribute to the process of atherosclerosis and are an indicator of glucose metabolism. Oftentimes when patients become insulin resistant, glucose becomes dysregulated or becomes abnormal and they get closer to diabetes, their triglycerides will go up and that can be a source of inflammation and an indicator of metabolic problems. Now let's go back to LDLs. Another misconception, the fourth one, high LDLs mean that you're going to have atherosclerosis. That is not true. There are plenty of patients that have high LDLs and they don't develop atherosclerosis. And the way we know this is we now test patients with imaging. We look at the arteries of the heart with the CCTA, a CAT scan with contrast of the coronary arteries of the heart. And if those arteries are clean, then we know that those high LDLs are not causing plaque. And when we look at blood tests, what is also associated with a clean set of arteries is low amounts of small dense LDL and high amounts of the big fluffy LDLs, as well as low amounts of oxidized LDL. Oxidized LDL is that highly inflamed LDL. And when it becomes inflamed, it can cause problems to the lining of the artery and cause plaque. Next misconception is that you can judge cardiovascular risk just by looking at cholesterol levels. I'm not just talking about HDLs and LDLs and triglycerides in discussing the risks that may be associated. The sizes of those LDLs, whether they're inflamed, there's also particle numbers. The more particles of LDLs you have, the more risk you have for atherosclerosis as well. The next misconception is that Triglycerides are only associated with fat, and they only go up with increasing fat in your diet. Triglycerides will go up when you increase the fat in your diet, but they will also go up when you increase the amount of sugar in your diet. Sugar and carbohydrates, those are large contributors to triglycerides and will increase those levels and then in turn increase your atherosclerosis risk. Those diets will also show that when your triglycerides go up, that's an indicator of poor glucose metabolism. Finally, 
The last misconception is that changing your diet will significantly lower your LDLs. Unfortunately, that's not true. Diet does contribute to our cholesterol levels overall. More likely, it will contribute to your triglycerides. When we look at the contribution diet makes to LDLs, it's only about 10 to 25 percent depending on the individual so if you have already got a good diet that's well regulated clamping it down or regulating it tightening it even more is unlikely to cause much of a change to those ldls now if your diet is poor your ldls will go up directly from some of that contribution but it will also go up indirectly because a poor diet promotes inflammation and inflammation increases ldls so in summary, let's go over some of those misconceptions. One, all cholesterol is bad. Definitely not the case. Cholesterol is vital for life, and there are multiple reasons why we want to maintain good cholesterol levels. Two, LDLs are bad and HDLs are good. Not always the case. You don't always have to lower your LDLs, and, and high HDLs don't always mean you're protected. Three, triglycerides are not as important as LDLs. Triglycerides are indicators of other disease and also will contribute to plaque formation on their own. Four, total cholesterol is a predictor for heart disease. Total cholesterol is not a predictor of heart disease. We need to look at the subfractions. Five, high LDLs mean that you will always get heart disease. High LDLs do not always mean you will get heart disease. Different sizes and subfractions have less of an atherosclerosis potential. Six, you can judge cardiovascular risk just by looking at cholesterol levels. We need to look at the subfractions and the breakdowns of those cholesterol levels, as well as inflammatory markers. You need to look at imaging. We have to put the whole picture together to look at cardiovascular risk. Seven, triglycerides go up with a high fat diet. Not just the high fat diet, they also go up with high sugar or high carbohydrate diets. Most of the LDLs are made in our liver, only about 10 to 25% from our diet. I hope that clears up some misconceptions. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you like what I'm talking about and you wanna hear more, leave some suggestions and follow me on my channel.